Well, I grew up um, right here in the Scotland Neck area. Grew up on a farm, and um, my dad farmed for a living, and so I, that's what I did pretty much every day with, that I that I could. I probably was always interested in farming at a very, very early age. I'd say six, seven years old. I mean, I always wanted to be with my dad wherever he was at, uh, riding on uh, farm equipment. Um, you know, whether it be you know riding in dump trucks, hauling grain to the market, or or actually mainly being out on the actual tractors themselves. Probably when I was younger, my favorite part of growing up on a farm and favorite thing was riding with my dad and actually he included me and, you know, help, letting me help work on the farm even when I was little, picking up tobacco sticks and tobacco leaves and, you know, making me feel useful and, I just, any, any time I spent with my mom and dad on the farm was probably, you know, good memory and even though a lot of times it was hard work, it was, you know, just a lot of fun too. Ever since I can remember, my dad grew peanuts, um, my grandfather grew peanuts before that and um, there's always been peanuts on this farm except for a few years where uh, either the price was too low or just needed to get out of the peanuts for rotation's sake. My grandfather farmed here. Um, for probably 50 or 60 years, and then my dad uh, came back home after the Coast Guard and farmed for about 30 years until health issues uh, caused him to have to retire from farming. And then when I got out of college, I started back farming, and uh, now I farm part-time. And my son has come back home and uh, is doing most of the work now. Well, I think he loves playing in the dirt and uh, running machines. We've been farming in the area for a long time. I really love it. I reckon it's in the blood around here. Um, I have a lot of friends around here that have stayed to farm. Um, we seem to be a pretty tight-knit group, uh, about the same age group of people, and we all love it. There's a lot of things that I enjoy about it. Um, I could not sit at a desk all day. <laughs> it's changed a little. My daddy did grow tobacco, and I haven't, haven't grown tobacco. I do grow um, peanuts and cotton. I've been growing peanuts uh, I'd say for probably 15 years now um, strip till just like I do you know my cotton and soybeans. The biggest change we've had is uh, using reduced tillage. The new tilling system is actually less tilling. Uh, there hardly anybody around here discs their land anymore and hardly anybody uses a bottom plow anymore. This piece of equipment here is a is a KMC strip till rig and it's got these ripper shanks on it that um, are actually going through the soil um, providing I guess you'd say a, a channel for the root system of the crop to go in and then immediately tied to this is the actual plant uh, planters that actually place the seeds in the ground and, and wrap them up and it's all done now in one application. We're definitely helping the environment with this type of farming as I guess well, as well as our own pocketbooks because we don't have as, as much fuel being spent or uh, burned into trotters. There's no ways as much labor involved in trying to get a crop in the ground as what it did years ago. There are some, um, some newer technologies with the, the equipment as far as you know, auto steer and some really exciting things with, with GPS. You know, it, you can still farm without all of the, the computers. I don't have any new technology, but I have ridden in the tractors with it. It is uh, it's a miracle of modern science for farming. The GPS systems now, they will put the tractor in the field, keep it on a straight road. They have auto steer in them also, so when you get close to your line, the GPS will take over the tractor and steer it as it's going down the road. Uh, one of the biggest things I've seen, and the reason I might would like it to get the GPS, when you're digging peanuts, one of the hardest things is sometimes you can't see your rows because the vines are so thick. With a GPS, you will stay dead on the row, and it has shown in studies to increase your yield um, because you're staying on the row and not knocking peanuts off. At one time, there were enough peanuts grown in Halifax County to fill up about eight of these warehouses like this. And now there are enough grown to fill up maybe two of these. When the peanut program involved a quota system uh, for the state of North Carolina, the majority of the peanuts were grown in a nine county area in the northeastern part of the state. Within a 10 mile radius of right here, 
there were probably four or five other peanut buying stations, and that's now dwindled down to just this one in a, in a much bigger radius. And I get peanuts now from as far as 100 miles away because we transport them in semi-vans that, that we weren't using, you know, 20, 15 years ago. With Cooperative Extension, I started in 1994. I think today we probably have around 175 actual farmers in Halifax County. When I started then, it was probably close to 300. Fewer farmers, but as the fewer farmers we have, they work a lot more acres. Now, if anybody's growing peanuts, what's happened since they've done away with the quota is we've kind of been on a, a roller coaster ride of supply and demand. It comes down to simple supply and demand. Last year, it was kind of like the perfect storm. Two years ago, in this area, had a good crop of peanuts, but across the peanut belt, there was a lot of places that didn't, and there were not as many peanuts planted. So some people who had peanuts that weren't contracted were able to sell their peanuts for $1,000 a ton, which is a lot. Well, what that created was a, a false impression among some growers that they were going to get $1,000 a ton the following year. We had a really good crop. My understanding is that there were about 1, point, uh, 1 million acres planted in 2011, and in 2012, I believe there was about 1.6 million, along with the highest yields we've ever had in the country for peanuts. All the added extra acres plus a record peanut yield has produced a glut of peanuts. So our contract has fallen back to $540 with a designated cut in acreage by the sheller. It's it's hard it's um because you never know from year to year what you're gonna be able to count on the, the contract being. I haven't bought a lot of new equipment and, and because you're scared to a certain point if um you go out and make a lot of investment, things might change. You don't know that you're gonna be able to grow peanuts next year if they don't have a good contract price. And so if, if think if you keep your overhead low and, and you, you can go into it and, and sit out a year if prices aren't, you know, where you want them to be, then, you know, you're better off. By not having some stability within the market, like through a farm program that could kind of manage the amount you know, crops we grow, that sometimes hurts us. I mean, that's, that's free enterprise at, at work, you know, uh, true, um, I guess you're balancing um, supply and demand issues there, but uh, it's, it makes it tough on us from one year to the next when we invest heavily in certain type of equipment, um, anticipating, let's say, growing a lot of peanuts, for example, and then, you know, you have an overproduction of peanuts and the next year they're cheap and you can't, you can't afford to hardly to grow them. I just enjoy peanuts. It's um, one of those crops that, that you have to love working with. And I, I, I think, um, you know, Daddy was a good peanut farmer and I learned a lot from him. And, you know, it's just a, a crop I really enjoy. I enjoy scouting it and, and working with it. A fresh dug peanut right out of the ground. It's the best thing in the world. I love to eat peanuts. I like them raw, I like them boiled, I like them shelled, I like them chocolate covered. Any way you can fix peanut, I like it. I don't know if you've ever had boiled peanuts, but if you're hunting, you need to try them. A lot of folks are kind of grossed out by them because they look slimy and all that because you're, you're boiling the shell and all in, in obviously salty water, and uh, but they're delicious. I love peanuts. I love to eat peanuts, yeah. <laughs> I eat them raw in the trailer, you know, when we're when we're harvesting. And I can remember when I was I was a little girl, and um, I used to crawl in the peanut trailer when my daddy was picking, and he would put a couple of dumps in, and I was sitting up there eating the peanuts. And I can remember telling him that he was going to have to go pick some more because I was going to eat all those. So. <laughs>